Well, it's a lovely day today. Warm. I don't know, the weather's suddenly come very nice and warm again. Sun is shining. And as you can hear, the creek just down there, the water is gently wending its way downwards, down into the Delaware River. <sighs> Could get very poetic, couldn't we? <laughs> What I actually wanted to do was to show you just some things, what I'm doing right now. Um, I've just got a few pots to show you here, and then I want to go over onto the table over there and talk about a glaze that I'm preparing. So, let's go. Let's move the camera here down. And you can see here a variety of shapes that i am just been in the process of uh, making. These are some carved ones, scratched, faceted with my potato peeler. It's good to see what other people are doing. I'm not saying it's good for you to see my work in particular, but it's good to see other people's work and what they're up to casserole dish there. I don't know if you can notice but the lug on this side down there is beginning to crack and that's because the lug, um, the body was a little bit on the dry side when I did it. Now a lot of people have been asking me about the results of a sawdust firing that I did a little while ago and I apologize I've not gotten round to but these are some of the pots that were in the sawdust firing here as you can see now I think it's very much down to how you how you feel about things but I would have liked them to have been perhaps a little blacker and the reason that they didn't come out as black as I wanted them to. By the way, these were fired from from raw in a raw state, and they were and they were kind of slightly burnished. Uh, my sawdust wasn't in fact sawdust; it was really shavings, and I think they do burn quicker. And of course, you know, in the process of the sort of the burning of the of the sawdust or the shavings, carbon is produced and this gets into the clay and makes it black. Well, of course it can get in, but it can also get out again if it if the if it gets too hot again afterwards it can burn out. I think perhaps next time I'll do a little denser in sawdust. So anyway that's that. Um, let me just show you a glaze I'm just about to sieve actually. Um, here I'm just getting myself organized as you can see and this is actually going to be a celadon glaze and I've actually just mixed the ingredients together and I'll give you the ingredients it's 25% felspar, 25% whiting, 25% quartz or f well I've got I've used flint in this case and 25% china clay. Did I say china clay? Hang on, let's go through it again. 20 was well, equal parts, 25% china clay, quartz, or flint, um, whiting and felspar, 25% each. And then it's got 2% of uh, red iron oxide. Well, I've got a, I've got a sieve here and a bucket. I'm kind of making do here with the workshop in Barrowville. Some things we have and some things we don't have, but anyway. So what I'm going to do is just ladle out some of this. And then what I do is, you can use an old credit card or a, a, a rib like this, just gently I think this is an 80 sieve, I'm not sure, an 80 mesh. So 
See, basically, that's what we have to do, isn't it? And then. carry on until we've done it all. And then we have to adjust the thickness so it's the right thickness because we don't want it to be too too watery neither do we want it to be too 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 viscous. It's important to put it through a sieve because that actually helps to um, mix it properly and get all the particles, especially if you've got an oxide in there like I have, like I've got 2% red iron oxide. In fact this this bucket of glaze here is is basically two kilograms of those four ingredients I mentioned, quartz, feldspar, um, china clay and whiting. Two kilograms of that and then I calculated 2% of that is actually 80 grams, so it's got 80 grams of, of um, red iron oxide. You can calculate what that is into, into pounds and ounces, but I can't tell you off the top of my head because I'm working metrically, because it's more logical, even though I'm English. <laughs> I was brought up with pounds, shillings and pence, and in pounds and ounces I've kind of converted myself now into the metric way of thinking. However, each to his own. So I'm going to carry on and do that. Um, while you're doing this kind of thing, always it's handy to have a, a sponge nearby, isn't it? Just to to wipe your hands. And I've, as you can see, I've got a, a towel around my neck. So here from Barryville, all I can say is keep practicing, hang on in there, be creative, and we'll see you in the next clip. Bye now.